Shalom. I want to start giving all praises due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Rakar Kadah. Respect and honor to all the apostles and elders that taught this word. Salutations to you, brothers, that's out there preaching this word and laying your life down on the front line to preach the gospel of truth. And this is another episode of Glad Tidings Ministry, and this is Prince Shemai Basar. So I want to go into, um, I want to go into when we hear all these um, turmoils and things that's going to come upon the earth, um, what should we do? Okay? And little do we know that the scriptures, um, it tells us how we can overcome these trials and tribulations in the latter times. Um, so the number one topic that everybody talks about is in the book of Revelations when it's talking about the mark of the beast, which is the um, RFID chip. So before I go into the scriptures, I want to just read um, something that I have pulled up concerning the RFID chip, but some people say is the micro microchip implant. Okay, and this is all rights reserved. So here we go. It says this type of sub sub subdermal implant usually contains a unique ID number that can be linked to information contained in an external database, such as identity, document, criminal record, medical history, medication, addresses, book, and other potential users. Um, what else did it say? All right. So, and then it says, it says the micro implants, humans can have a variety of potential side effects. Okay, including health concerns, social concerns, and other risks. Okay, it says health concerns, right? Social concerns and other risks. Now let's go into the health concerns. It says health concerns. These include infections, adverse tissue reactions, and incompatibility with some MRI technology. Infections can be caused by improper implantation, implant, implantation implement rejection or corrosion. Now it says the social concerns. These include privacy, security, and identity theft risk. For example, a bad actor could potentially capture the signal from a nearby RFID chip and use it for identity theft. Some also worry about the potential from governments and businesses to use microchips to track individuals and gain access to more data. It says other risks. These include the potential for abuse such as control, you hear that? Manipulation and oppression. Some also question the ethics of implanting chips in people, similar to how they are implanted in pets. So we got a little bit more. It says this type of subnormal implant usually contains, a, we read that, a unique ID. So now let's read this, right? We're going to Revelations chapter 16, and we're going to start on, um, I guess we'll start with verse 1. It says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials. And it says, of the wrath of the most high upon the earth. And it says, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisy and grievous sore upon the men who had the mark of the beast and upon them that was worshipped his image. Okay, so we see that you see what's going to happen now some people think that it's a it's a, it's a philosophy meaning like it's it's not literally it's just like a metaphor but um the scriptures say that it shows us that this is not a metaphor that this is li literally all right and the reason why the elite want to do this is because they want to control the people Okay, that's what a new world order is, controlling the people, controlling their mind, invading their privacy. Okay, it's like a dictatorship country or communism. Okay, so that's why they do that for more power. Um, it says in the scripture, I don't know exactly where it's at, but it says um, that, well, it says in Job 9.24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, who and where is he? So we know that this is Satan's kingdom right now. And the Lord is allowing him to rule and do a lot of things until Yahweh shall come back, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Okay? So we got to set our faith into that. 
So let me go to Revelations 13. And I'm going to start from 8. Revelation 13, 8. And it says, There followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. It's fallen. That great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of, of her fornication. Now we know that this is talking about Babylon, but this is talking about also America, because America is spiritually Babylon, spiritually Rome, okay, spiritually Greek. Why do we say that? And also spiritually Egypt. We say that is because America is living as in the old ways and in the same ways as ancient Romans did, as the ancient Greeks did, as the ancient, ancient Egyptians did, okay? So you look at how the system is ran today in America, that's how the Roman system was ran too. So when you look at the eagle, the eagle was the Romans' sick, um, sign for their for their um, power, authority, the eagle. And then when you look on the American dollar, we also have an eagle there too. So we this system that we're in right now, current today, is running off a of Roman system. That's why you got the Senate, the public, public, plebeian, what is it called? Plebeian. I think it's played CBNs. And then you also got the Republicans. Okay. And this is all coming back from the Roman Empire. So we're constantly running off the Roman Empire as we speak today. All right. So now let's go back into this. It says that um, because she made all the nations drink of her wine and her wrath or her fornication. Well, how did America, how, how did these other kingdoms that follow America, or well, what they do, they look, America is the leader, the forerunner, okay? So it's like the um, tra America is the trans center, okay? So what America do, all the other countries follow after her, okay? They want to be just like her, okay? Um, what they call it, um, it says wherever the borders is, that is the border of wickedness, all right? So... It says um, 9, verse 9, Revelation 13 and 9. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If a man worship the beast, okay? So this beast that he's talking about is the system, okay? How the system is running, okay? And to be accepted in this system, okay, there's things you have to do. So when you see these celebrities and you see all these rappers, there are certain levels that you have to reach, okay, to be part of this system. And then there are certain things that if you don't do, they'll only keep, they'll probably get rid of you or you won't make it to that high frontier or that high status, should I say. And then it says in verse nine, it says, and the third angel, I followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God of the most high, which is poured out with mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the lamb. So this is going to be a very disturbing time. Okay. And a lot of people is going to take it. And you've seen a lot of people fail when they even went through the pandemic. They don't have no faith and they have faith in this system. The spiritual Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah is not their power. It is spiritual Satan. That's why I gave you Job 9 and 24. And this is the vibration the earth is pushing out today as we speak. It says 10. It says the same shall drink. Revelation 13 and 10. It says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment send it up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night so they're going to be suffering okay so in other words it's going to be the people that's going to be plugged into the system okay and it's kind of like lot's wife when Lot's wife looked back she didn't look back because she just just obeyed the most high that was part of it she looked back is because she was happy of the dainty that the way she was living she was happy of what sodom and gomorrah was giving her she was living her best life in there so when the angels told them not to look back, she looked back because she was losing all her prestige, her status, her name, her fame. And that's why she looked back because she said she was going to miss that. And that's why she turned it to stone. So that's kind of, we can use that illustration on taking this chip or receiving this mark. Okay. It's kind of like looking back like Lot. Okay. It's like, it's, 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 it's depending on 
the government and not depending on the most high, our creator. Because that's how we get our, our salvation through Christ and through our and through the most high, not by man. And that's why we have the scripture that says that man cannot live about live with um, bread alone, but on every substance of the most high. Okay? So you think about that. Then it says, Whoso who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. Okay. And it said, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh Shah. That's my point. When all these turmoils and stuff hit, all these gruesome destruction, people dying, murder, and all that, where should you be at? Where should your mind be at? The Lord is telling you, keeping the commandments. So that's why it says, here is the patience of the saints, because we believe in the words of Yahweh Shasei, who you can call Christ, that he's going to come and deliver us. We believe in the commandments. The commandments shows us how to live our life while we're down here on earth, okay? And keeping the faith. So it says, that's a key scripture. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High. Here are they that keep the commandments of the faith of, Yah of the Most High. So there you have it. You have to keep the faith of the Most High. Now, when all this turmoil comes, we're going to go to um, we're going to go to let's try Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes let's see if we can get that. You know what? Let me get it on here. I don't want this to be too long. I just want to give you, hope this is edifying, give you something to think about. So this is Ecclesiastes 12, um, 13 and 14. Uh, where's Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiastes. Here it is. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Okay. And it says... Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Okay? Fear the Most High and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So when people walk around talking about, what's my life purpose? What should I do? Um, what's my plans and goals? What does it say? It said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So this is your purpose of life, is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That is the whole duty of man. Okay? Um, let's go to... I'm just going, let's go to a couple of more. Let's go to John 15 and 10. Then I'm going to end it because I don't want to stay too long on this. Um, John 15 and 10. John 15 and 10. Now, this is written in red. So this is telling you that Yahweh, who you're going to record Jesus, is speaking these words as himself. This is what he said, not me. So John 15 and 10. Okay. And it says John 15 and 10. And it says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even, I've, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Okay? So if you keep your, the, the Lord's statute and commandments, okay, you abide in the house of love. Okay? Then it says, um, let's go to... First John three twenty four, and I got one more, and then we are gonna close. First John three twenty four. Where's First John at? First John three twenty four. And he that keep his commandments dwell in him, and he in him, and hereby we know that he abide in us by the Spirit which he have given us. Okay, so that's self-explanatory. And the last scripture, 
And then we're going to close it. It's Matthew, my favorite. It's Matthew 19. Okay? Matthew 19, verse 16 and 17. Matthew 19, verse 16 and 17. Okay? And be, and behold, one came said unto him, Good master, what good thing should I do that I may have eternal life? So one of the men came up to Christ, who used to call Christ, his name was Yahweh, and said, What should I do to gain eternal life? Now this is go this is for today, not yesterday, but for today. All right. It says, What it says, what it says, and behold, what one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing should I do that I may have eternal life? So how do we get into the kingdom of the most high? That's going to be a planet on earth, right? He, Yahweh Shah, who you in the court Christ, told us a specific key word that we can keep. And he said unto him, why calls thy me good? There is none good but one. That is the most high. Pause. But then it says, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So when all these turmoils is coming, if we walk in on a straight gate and following Yahweh Shah, wherever he go, keeping his commandments, preaching the gospel of truth, which is the commandments, we're going to be fine. The Lord's going, he going, he going to send his angels to protect us. So in those days when trouble comes, don't worry about that. Keep the Lord's statue of commandments and you shall live. Shalom. Hope you was edified.